Well, so speaking of Nicaragua, actually, so it's funny because, you know, back in 2016, it was all Russia, 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 Russia. The media loved using Russia as the boogeyman, which this can be confusing, right? Because yes. it's like, well, maybe, that you know, we, we know the media is lying through their teeth. So it makes you want to think that maybe Russia is not the boogeyman. But then now we have what's happening, you know, we, I think it was back in June, right, where there are reports coming out that there are Russian troops in Nicaragua. Right. Yet the media troops, is silent yeah. on the threats, which makes you think that, like, is the media complicit? I mean, we know that the media is heavily influenced by the CCP. Right. So. And they are. The Russians have been in our media. Well, I talked to Vladimir Bukowski years ago. He had gotten into the Soviet archives, Communist Party, Soviet Union archives. And the archivists uh, taunted him one day. He held up a piece of paper at a distance he couldn't read, and it had names, columns of names on both sides of the paper. And he said, you will never see this. These are all the media people in the West we control. Right? And Bukowski told me that story. Right. Um, so, you know, what people don't understand is the uh, power of this infiltration and the double blind. Look, they had to come out and be anti-Russian. All the leftist pro-Soviet, pro-Russian people in our system, which had been helping, look at uh, Hillary Clinton helped Russia build up their own Silicon Valley when she was Secretary of State, gave billions to that. They, had, they brought uh, President Medvedev to Silicon Valley famously, Obama did. Um, they had the Uranium One deal, Hillary Clinton, right, and Obama. They were, we were helping Russia right up into all of a sudden, and then you had that, that where Obama got caught on tape with President Medvedev, you know, tell Vladimir, I just need to get elected one time, and then I can kind of give you what you want in the, in the, uh, the negotiations, the disarmament negotiations. Uh, and all of a sudden, they realized we have exposure here. And if, if you're the Kremlin, and you're going, oh, we're going to start a war. If we start a war, all our buddies over here in the West are going to get, they're going to get thrown out of politics. They won't be electable. So they started to be Putin's enemy. This is what we're, they had meetings, like there was a funny meeting that Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, it was in the um, latter half of 2012, had with Hillary Clinton. And they were not supposed to meet and they met alone for four hours. No translators. And, and Lavrov is just a really good English speaker. And she comes back and she wouldn't give her own staff a briefing. And they said, what was this? This is, this is the American Secretary of State meets with the foreign minister of Russia for four hours. And we don't know what was said. There's no record of the meeting. There's no translator to witness it. And from that point on, you can trace suddenly this anti-Russian thing. It's like Lavrov, this is my theory. Lavrov said, all right, you guys got a posture against this now because you've got exposure because we're getting ready for some things and you'll be blamed. So Obama's going to go against this in Syria. He's going to draw the red line and we're going to do, we're going to be taking Crimea or whatever. And, and you're going to posture against us because you have to, because then you will be perceived as being on our side. And we have to make sure you are not because we need you in charge as we advance. And so where does, you know, so where does someone like Soros or Klaus Schwab or, you know, some of these, these global organizations like the UN, for instance, that, you know, where do they fit into all this? Because it seems like, if, especially if you look back at COVID, you look at, you know, the, the loss of, you know, the loss of freedoms that we've all experienced. It's obvious that, you know, Agenda 2030, there's also a push from that particular faction. They want their own version of control. So, in, in, and even with Soros coming out and trying to, you know, collapse the financial systems over in Asia, Right, you, know, you have Chinese, you know, communist, you know, mouthpiece papers openly calling Soros the son of Satan, and he's out there saying that Xi Jinping is the greatest threat to free societies in the world. So, is is that just a show, or is there is there actually a, a struggle in a way, be, kind of between the two the two big mob families fighting over for control of the block? No, Soros is look. Soros came out of communist Hungary. So, how does a poor immigrant from communist from a communist country become a billionaire? He had help. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> the, the pretense, I have looked into Soros, uh, this idea that Soros is the enemy of Putin, I, it's a dog and pony show. It's the same thing. It's, a, it's his alibi. Soros has done plenty to help Russia and China. He's still helping them. He's helping the communists here in the United States that are working with the Chinese. 
So the Chinese are attacking him. They're giving him cover. So you see, this is the thing. You don't want to expose your agent. If he's obviously pro-Chinese and helping and feeding, he's giving money to communists here in the and and their front organizations. He's feeding them money. And these organizations are blatantly allied with China. So wait a minute. How can Soros be helping the communists and the Chinese fronts and allies here and the Chinese are denouncing him? It's really easy to read. This is just, they're just giving him an alibi. It's all, all warfare is deception. It's deception. Well, See, now, here's, a, here's a question I have is, you know, so our art of war, one of those fundamental principles is when you're strong, act weak, when you're weak, act strong, right? Yeah. So, you know, right now, in my opinion, America probably has never looked weaker. So do you think that there is some sort of, you know, part of the military, et cetera, that is very strong, that's pretending that it's kind of feigning weakness in the way that it is um, to you know, kind of enter into this war in a much stronger position? Or do you think that what we're seeing is a real reflection of what's happened to our country? And it wasn't just Biden. We're going back to the Clintons, the Bushes. We're going back to the, the, the stripping of our manufacturing base, everything that's happened, which if you, you know, I, I interviewed uh, Dr. Or, sorry, not Dr. General Robert Spalding lately, who's extensively mm-hmm. covered the infiltration of China, especially into our government and the weakening of our country. So do you think that what we're seeing right now is a real representation of our strength? And also, how is that reflected within our weapons systems and our ability to compete and defend ourselves? Our weapons, look, we had a failed ICBM test. We had a failed uh, hypersonic missile test here recently. Um, The thing people have to understand is, you know, we hear about the New World Order and and WAF and the bad people and the Democrats. Russians goal was, you know, under the Soviet Union to take us over from the within, like Mao. Infiltration and subversion. Um, uh, Senator McCarthy was right. There was subversion ongoing. The problem is McCarthy got attacked and discredited. People did not want to deal with that. And the infiltration had already in the 30s and 40s was significant. Uh, you, you go to Diana West's book, um, American Betrayal, and she outlines the history of World War II, how the Russians were manipulating our strategy in World War II from inside the White House by people like Harry Hopkins. And, and uh, Senator McCarthy got a lot of uh, criticism because he wrote the book Retreat from Victory, and he said there's something wrong with General um, uh, Marshall. The, uh, the chief of the general staff, later Secretary George Marshall, Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense during the Korean War. There's something wrong with him. And, you know, you, we, we've had a lot of things released since then showing that, you know, one of Marshall's key deputies, General Walter Bettel Smith, in the movie Patton, he's called Beetle by Patton, uh, was apparently a Soviet agent. Uh, Mark Riebling explains that in his book, Wedge, uh, uh, the release documents about uh, what had happened. And Smith was the head of the CIA when when, uh, Eisenhower was elected president. And Eisenhower was asked by the FBI, get him out of the CIA. You know, and they, they had to they had to retire him because they never prosecuted him because espionage is a very difficult crime to prosecute. But we were seriously compromised from the very beginning within the CIA, within our institutions, the Pentagon, the, the inside the White House for years. You know, we had Walt Rostow. There were people, uh, there was a very famous security expert at the State Department who fought the Kennedy administration about Rostow saying, he has communist relatives. He has communist affiliations. This is a national security advisor to President Lyndon Johnson. Then Henry Kissinger, look, this book here, Henry Kissinger, Soviet agent by this New York detective. There's serious questions about Henry Kissinger. There was a defector, um, Michael Golanowski, who came out of Poland. He was a colonel general in Polish communist intelligence. He had seen a list of GRU, that's Russian military intelligence uh, agents recruited in occupied Germany in 1945, and he said on the list was Sergeant Henry Kissinger, right? The infiltration to explain, you know, you hear all these things about the New World Order and stuff. The Russians would love to create narratives to get us to misunderstand their infiltration 
and for us to believe it's somebody else behind the bad things that are happening in our own government. But it's their infiltration, it's their subversion, it's their war plan, and the fact that they're readying their weapons now means they believe they've subverted us and weakened us enough, and that weakness is the provocation. That's what provokes them, an aggressor to attack, that they think they can then take over the world in so, a giant push. So it can, so how you're seeing a situation, it's not just that you know, uh, you know, Russia invades Ukraine, NATO and the U.S., you know, we start sanctioning and that kind of steps on Putin's toes. So now he's threatening with nukes. It, this is a, they have been building up for this for a very, very long time. The, the, the Soviet Union lured NATO into Eastern Europe. You read the real history. Gorbachev had no problem with East Germany becoming part of NATO. He just said, you know, give us $80 billion or whatever it was, it was Deutschmarks. You know, just give us money, just pay us. Well, what do they do with that money? They, they use that money to infiltrate the West, to, 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 to take over companies and to establish positions, to allow them to influence Western policies. Angela Merkel, long-term Christian Democratic Union pre, uh, Chancellor of Germany, she was an East German communist youth leader with KGB connections. So she's a conservative. And there were many concerns. I mean, like Valencia, Valencia in Poland, um, there was a former Polish secret police officer said, this guy was an agent of the secret police going way back. I had a, a leader of Polish solidarity tell me that when he came to this country in the early 90s, uh, I met him and he said, Valencia, we know he is a secret police agent. Same thing, uh, th out of Czechoslovakia, Vaclav Havel. He was not an honest, you know, uh, 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 pro-democratic person. You know, what a schoolmate of his that I spoke with who knew him for many years, he said he believed in communism, you know, Vaclav Havel, with a human face, right? Like Gorbachev. But the communism with the human face was a deception. You know, remember, uh, Stalin even was our Uncle Joe at one time. He was communism with the human face. Um, there's always this back and forth with communism. They're bad and then they're good. They're bad and then they're good. It's like breathing, right? And now they're bad again. Same pattern. Um, but see, they, they have to make us think they're good so they can import the technology and get the capital to build up their arms industry. Then when that's, ex and then they use that to capture other countries, to go into Angola and Ethiopia, go into Nicaragua and, and make the you know Afghanistan invasion, do all the things they did during the Cold War. And then what happens is they retreat from some of those places or they pretend to collapse, but they're still maintaining their hold. Look at who is, you know, we fought that 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 war Ronald Reagan did to defeat the, the uh, Sandinistas and Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua years ago. And supposedly we won the Cold War. Who's the president of Nicaragua now? Daniel Ortega. Sandinistas are there. How did that happen? Is that a magic trick? 